Hello, today I'm working on an HP convertible laptop. This is the 15-DA0007NA. Uh, I think it's known as a, well, it's a pavilion, but this is one of those that flips all the way around backwards to become a tablet. So it's got a, a digitizer on top of the LCD panel. This computer is very slow uh, and the hard drive is the bottleneck. Task manager shows that the hard drive's reading it. At the most I saw was 30 megabytes per second, so it's time for this to be upgraded. So it's got a one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to replace that with a 500 gigabyte SSD. This little mouse dongle just fell apart when I took it out of here. That's not good. <laughs> we'll put that back in in a minute. Now there's one visible screw right here, very small screw. I might do that first so I don't forget about it. All of the other screws are going to be hidden underneath these feet. Gonna check to see if there aren't any other screws hiding under the other ends of these. Is that a screw? No. All right. So I stuck this in here and that released this corner a little bit. So now maybe this back edge will want to release. Let's see. It's a very tight fit. I can see though that it's. Okay, I'm just going to go along the edge here and kind of pry this out a little bit as I lift up to try to get that to uh, let go, you know, to try to get the clips to let go. Yeah, that's working. And it doesn't require much force at all, which tells me that it's the right way to do it. I'm lifting up on here a little bit and then getting this tool in here and just pulling the side away. So now I'll go down this side and do the same thing. It's quite tight. It almost feels like there's a screw or something. There are very tight clips in here. Yeah, it's just clips. It's very satisfying. Okay, so now it's just the back. And I want to get those clips to release as well. Don't want to pry. Now, I was tempted to just lift the lid and, and tip it up, but that would surely break these clips. So now it's just this corner here. There we go. And I don't think I broke a single clip. So this battery feels fine. There's the mechanical hard drive. This has an M2 slot. I think I'm going to replace this hard drive with an M.2 drive. I might take this connector out. I can actually do the disc cloning in situ here. Let's do that instead. Instead of taking this out and putting it in my computer and using my computer to do it, I'll just boot into Minitool Partition Wizard's boot USB drive. I'll put the M2 drive in here so then I'll have both drives. I'll be able to clone from one to the other within this computer. And right now, these crucial P2 drives are pretty inexpensive. So let me just order a new one of those. Screw for that? I think I do. Alright, I'll snip the bottom back on just for integrity. The customer's mouse dongle has fallen apart, and the metal sleeve for the USB is still embedded in here. So I'm gonna to try to get that out. So there's potentially still power in here, so I need to be very careful. There we go. Got a little bit of it exposed here, so now I should be able to grab it. Yeah. Okay. 
Hopefully I can fix that. Uh, so I press escape in order to get to the boot device options, so F9. Let's show you what I'm doing here. And I'm going to tell it that I want to boot off of my SanDisk Cruiser Blade, which hopefully will load Partition Wizard. Okay, so I'm going to clone this one terabyte drive. I'm going to copy that and onto the disk one, the 500 gigabyte Crucial P2 SSD 8. And it didn't leave enough room for the last partition on the drive. So I'm going to shrink this main partition a little bit and then I'll manually copy this partition over to that unallocated space on here and I'll slide it down to the end of the drive and then finally I will resize the main partition to use up all of the available space. There. So now the two partitions look the two disk layouts look identical, with the main exception being that the big partition is half the size. So I will apply this, and then this machine will copy from the hard drive to the M.2 drive. And I'll come back when this is done. Okay, the disk cloning succeeded. So I'm going to shut it down and take the hard drive out. So now I snapped this all back together to keep the hinges stable. So now I just need to pop these clips again. Yeah. So I'm going to pop this hard drive out. And I'm going to take it out of here for now and put it back together. And hopefully we boot. booting into Windows. Let me just get the HDMI going. So this computer is booting almost into Windows and then getting the blue screen of death. So I'm trying to coax it into uh, automatic repair mode by starting it and then killing the startup during the, the Windows wait cursor. If you do that three times on the third time it should go into Windows recovery tools. Here we should have the weight cursor. There we go. So now I'm going to power it off for a couple seconds and then turn it back on. Hmm, this isn't looking promising. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I'm going to try the Windows 10 boot media. and see if we can re do the startup repair. Yay, I think this worked. Whew. Windows 10 installation media saves the day. I'd say it's pretty rare that the automatic repair works, but in this case, when it was a third-party driver that was the problem and not failing hardware, um, it's understandable that it would work. So I'm really pleased. Now I'm just going to install Windows updates and get this back to the customer, put the screws back in. Let's do that now. I'll do the screws first. A, there's a magnet in the laptop up here somewhere for the lid. It's very strong. I always wondered about putting magnets in, in laptops. Seems like you're just running the risk of, I don't know, getting a magnet too close to a drive. Bad idea. Huh. I can't get it to stay straight. There we go. All right. Mm, I think 
Bluetooth will connect wirelessly. So let's see how, what does the performance manager look like now? The, the drive was at 100% before, and now we are just at the mercy of the CPU. Two cores, four threads at 2.3 gigahertz, that's reasonable. Some of these are boosting up to 3.8, so no, this is great. 8 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 megahertz and a NVMe solid state drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away. I spoke to the customer about this and said that this was going to be the plan uh, because he knew that his McAfee had expired. And I talked about Windows Defender and that you don't need to buy McAfee or Norton, that uninstalling them will let Windows Defender antivirus take over. And so that's what we're going to do. Looks like we're up to date and Windows Defender antivirus is working. So um, this computer is done. Thanks for watching.